So, I mean this is a good example of how would you start from the basics and analyze the uh, factor of safety for the infinite slopes alright. Now, suppose if I revert the direction of the seepage, if, if it happens to be upwards direction alright uh, and that is what I cited some times back. Uh, we have discussed this type of a situation, there is a element of soil mass and then there is a seepage force which is acting at the base. Alright. So, the way we define seepage force is if I know the hydraulic gradient multiplied by S yes, gamma w per unit volume of the control volume or the soil mass. Per unit volume of the soil mass, the total seepage force is I into gamma w. So, if I know the volume of the slice, if I multiply it by I gamma w, I know what is the pore pressure in terms of the seepage force. So, can I compute here, if the, if the direction of the seepage is upwards, N prime will be equal to what? Yes, compute it quickly. Yes. Yes, compute it. So, this will be gamma buoyant cos i minus, of course, b term is missing, yes, you are right. Gamma b was a buoyant. What is the value of the pore pressure here? If critical gradient I c, if I depict as I c, I c into gamma w into volume that is b into d. So, this is I c into gamma w into b into d that is it, rest is same. So, what is the factor of safety in this case? So, this is the case of upward seepage. n prime tan phi prime and divided by this thing ok. This whole thing is this divided by what w sin i. So, gamma b into b d sin i. Solve this expression, what is that you are going to get? 1 minus cos i also I will take out and this comes down. So, this becomes tan phi prime over tan i multiplied by I c gamma w over what is the term which you are going to get? Gamma b cos i. All right. What is the significance of this? Gamma w upon gamma is taken as half. All right. So, what is going to happen to this term? 1 minus I c over cos i. multiplied by here we are assuming that gamma w over gamma is equal to half. So, what is the significance of this? If I c, I c is the uh, seepage gradient, yes seepage force clear. So, the more the seepage force acting on the system, the factor of safety is going to decrease that is right. 
It is a simple application of what we studied in the seepage theory, how to find out the force acting per unit volume of the seepage and seepage pressure we have defined and seepage force and then we can find out the factor of safety. The last situation which I would like to discuss in case of infinite slopes would be, let us extend this model to C5 material, infinite slopes and then see what happens. So, principally what is going to happen, you know wherever we have assumed C equal to 0, this component will come, nothing more than that. So, if you are considering a C5 material, when C is not equal to 0, your tau shear strength which is available would be C component plus sigma tan phi component, include C over here and that is it. This becomes a C phi soil. Let us draw the free body diagram or the different type of pressure which are acting on the on the slice of the uh, infinite slope. The only tricky thing here would be computing the pore pressure acting at the base of the slice. You can use the same concept still and mobilize C. So, for a uh, C phi soil mass and infinite slope, let us draw the free body diagram of the slice or the element which we have taken and show different forces which are going to come on that. This is the ground surface, sometimes people call this as ground level also, does not matter. There is a standing water table, that means there is a seepage which is parallel to the slope. And then I want to find out what is the stability of the system. So, this is a water table, this becomes a standing water table, this is the base of the slope, infinite slope which is the critical one, the weather failure is going to take place. You have shear stress, normal stress and then normal stress is because of the water table, effective stress, correct. Let us take the element. How will you compute the pore pressure at the base? Put the piezometer and let it cut the phreatic surface. This is the phreatic surface. All right. What is the intuitive feeling? If you place the piezometer over here, what is the height up to which it will go? Up to here? Never. Up to this line is cutting, this is the phreatic surface, draw a, draw a, nothing doing. It is not going to happen like that. So, this is your flow line, phreatic surface, flow line. Draw the equipotential perpendicular to the flow line passing through the point which is sitting at the base of the slice. 
is this correct? Then only you can find out the pore pressure. So, meaning thereby the equipotential line has to be touching this point, crossing this point and perpendicular to the flow line. So, this is the point where I want to find out the pore pressure. If you put the piezometer here, this is cutting, this is the equipotential line, equipotential line which is cutting the top flow line. So, this point has been obtained. Correct. So, this was mis misleading. Why? Because you have to draw the equipotential line and the flow line and the intersection of the two. So, what is the height of the H? What is the value of HW here? Perpendicular from here to this. That is it. This is the concept. So, this remains B. Yes, you are right. This is D the depth of the slip surface, this is the height of the water table normally we define as, this is the slip surface, there is a factor which is defined as n which is equal to z by d. So, can you compute now what is the value of uh, pore pressure at this point? This is Z, yes. So, this thing will be Z cos i and again projection of this on this plane. So, this is the value of Hz. So, that means Uw will be equal to what? Z cos square i and because we are finding out Uw multiplied by gamma w. So, Uw is as you know gamma w into Hw, that is it. The moment Uw is known, what we have to do? Uh, put the factor of safety term. So, factor of safety here will be equal to the shear strength available divided by the force which is acting, destabilizing force, correct. So, what will be that value? W sin i. Whatever steps I have followed over here, you have to follow the same steps for computing everything. The only thing is that this shear component will be equal to C multiplied by the length. What is the length? The base at which it is acting. So, what is the base length? This will be B sec i, correct. So, C prime multiplied by sec i and then effective stress. Okay, upon W sin i. So, if you solve this expression, uh, what you will be getting is, you will be getting, I am just skipping the steps and writing the final step uh, which will be equal to, the factor of safety will be equal to C prime over gamma d sin i into cos i. This term remains almost fixed gamma sin i cos i into gamma d, c prime by gamma d itself is a non-dimensional number. 
cohesion divided by gamma d all right now what's going to happen here we had this term 1 minus all right this term is becoming some parameter like n so this will become 1 minus what n times gamma w over gamma multiplied by tan phi prime over tan i so if you solve this expression by putting factor safety equal to 1 because this is the most critical condition so for fs equal to 1 what is going to happen uh, c prime by gamma into d can be written as cos square i tan i minus 1 minus n gamma w over gamma okay into tan phi prime this is the expression which will be getting this term is defined as ru the pore pressure parameter so in the simplest possible form uh, this expression can be written as c prime by gamma into d will be equal to cos square i tan i minus r u 1 minus r u into tan phi prime so such a complicated situation we have brought down to a simple relationship and uh, here the way you will read this is this is the critical depth so d may tend to become hc the critical depth of the surface so this d may attain criticality this is also a sort of a stability number c prime by gamma d if you remember when we were talking about the unsupported cut of the uh, height of the vertical cuts I use this term c by gamma d is a sort of a stability number all right so this can be written as c prime by gamma h c equal to cos square i tan i yes c prime by gamma h c will be equal to cos square i multiplied by tan i minus yes you see this r r r u term is n gamma w over gamma and suppose if i say n equal to 1 fully submerged case z becomes equal to d water surface is on the ground surface what will happen then so this will become 1 minus gamma w over gamma gamma minus gamma w is gamma buoyant yes over gamma multiplied by tan phi prime very good so this is a situation for a totally submerged slope what is the value of gamma b by gamma this is equal to 1 fine so what is the significance of this c prime over gamma sc equal to cos square i multiplied by tan i minus tan phi prime
okay. How many parameters are contributing to the stability of the slope? This is what actually you have to find out. You should realize this by the fact that this term remains same, all right. C prime by this term actually gets added up. So, what cohesion is doing? Mobilization of cohesion is giving more factor of safety to the slope and that is right. So, when both cohesion and friction are getting mobilized, both C and phi are coming to the picture, factor of safety has to get enhanced. What cohesion does? It induces pore pressures and the draining condition, the boundary conditions, okay. So, this water table because of the presence of partial submergence of the slope, the factor of safety has been computed and what we have done is we have extended this analysis to a situation where the entire slope has been assumed to be submerged and mathematically what we have done is we have put n equal to 1. So, this water table goes and sits over here. So, as the water table rises in the slopes, the factor of safety keeps on decreasing. Suppose if I ask you to draw the uh, dependence of, I mean like this is a function, I can always plot C prime by gamma H C as a function of I. Is this correct? So, more the inclination angle, what is going to happen to C, pi by C prime by gamma H is going to reduce. as i increases what is going to happen to the this function it is going to decrease okay as phi prime increases what is going to happen so more the value of phi prime what is going to happen the factor of safety is again going to decrease and we use this term n over here pore of pressure parameter. So, I can plot this function with respect to pore of pressure also. What is the contribution of pore of pressure? So, if n is lower, this term is going to be higher. So, what is going to happen to the factor of safety? Optimize it. Do you realize the situation? So, we have discussed uh, situations where infinite slope is made up of dry sands, it is made up of uh, dry sands and then there is a seepage pressure, there is an upward seepage pressure which is acting on the system and we have also talked about a submerged situation and we have extended this situation to a complete submergence and what we are observing is that how the factor of safety can be obtained. This is a complete submergence because this water table has reached up to this point. What is critical here is just to obtain the pore pressure function and once you have obtained this, that is how the things are uh, simple. So, if I solve this equation further, uh, C prime over gamma H C, this is equal to cos square i uh, tan i minus and phi prime, one of the ways to interpret this would be that if I plot H c, the critical height of the slope and as a function of i, you know normally these solutions are valid for i greater than 10. So, at 10 degree i, uh, if you plot the variation of H c with respect to i, this is how you will be getting it. So, what it indicates is 
H C and I are inversely proportional. In uh, otherwise also, you know, you remember this is the slope and this is somewhere we have taken as D which is equal to H C. So, more the inclination of this slope, infinite slope which is having water table, what is going to happen? The H C value is going to drop. So, otherwise we can also plot it as C prime by gamma C as a function of I. Another way of plotting this could be you have C prime and C prime is plotted with respect to I. The way we read this graph is if I have to design a slope or if I have to do some retrofitting uh, for a given angle of the infinite slope, given angle of the infinite slope what should be the value of C prime or vice versa. If C prime is known what is the value of I? So, this can be extended again as 10 degree and then we have a straight line and this straight line is C prime equal to gamma into H C multiplied by this factor. x. One more parameter which can be plotted with respect to i would be uh, c prime and the way we read this is for a given c prime value what will be the critical value of i which is going to be stable. So, here again we will have this 10 degree as a threshold and beyond which we will have a uh, non-linear line, okay. And what is the function? This function is equal to C prime into gamma H C multiplied by X. This is the value of X. So, these type of charts can be utilized quite uh, well in the engineering practice. Whatever we have discussed so far, there could be an alternate situation uh, where uh, the ground water table, if I say that this is the ground surface, this is the slope and at this point, we have phi d, c d getting mobilized on the slip surface. The water table is somewhere here. All right, and if I say that this unit weight is gamma 1 and this section is of h1 height, the total height of the slope is h, it is a reverse situation because what we did in the previous analysis is we took the height of the water column above the critical surface as n times d that was the z value all right and suppose if i ask you to uh, find out the stability number so you try to prove this yourself by using the same principles what we have discussed so far what we'll be getting is as cd over gamma into hc where hc is equal to the critical height or the depth of the uh, critical surface and this will be equal to cos square i. Now, this term will get modified a bit 1 minus h 1 over h gamma minus gamma 1 over gamma and this whole thing multiplied by tan of i minus gamma b over gamma plus h1 over h gamma 1 minus gamma b over gamma tan 
phi d and this is the stability number which we have got. Uh, you should attempt proving this equation. Uh, the concepts remain same, the only thing is sign convention has got changed. In the previous problem, what we did is we considered this as z, all right. And the unit rate which was beneath the water table or below the water table was considered as gamma submerged. Thank you.